Mason, you're right. Yes. Shot in the territory, Mr. Barry. Doctor? He's still alive? He's in bad shape. He's been nicked at least four times. Well, get him in the hospital right away. Come on, boys. I never knew you were the grateful type, Steve. You saved him a bank, didn't he? Thanks, Miss Sager. I expect to see you out of here this week. Hello, Walter. I'm better. Don't seem to bother me much on the days you come to the hospital. I'll try to get in more often. Good morning, Mr. Barnwell. Good morning. Feeling better? I feel a lot better when you get a few things straight. You've been a sick man, much too sick to talk. You mean you've been here before? You've been too busy fighting for your life to notice me. I'm not a mistake. Oh, pulse increasing. My best speak to the doctor. Here, I'm all right. What's that noise out there? I believe they're celebrating. Celebrating what? The election of the new marshal. Who is popular enough? Did they say Bonnewell? Apparently, John Bonnewell has just been elected marshal of Broken Land. But that's me. I'm John Bonnewell. Congratulations. Oh, I don't understand this. So you're... I was hit from the... Well, well, Marshal Hardius, congratulations. Your election was unanimous. Well, it may interest you to know that I haven't the slightest idea what this is all about. It was wonderful, the way the people of Broken Lance wrote in your name. Would it be asking too much to inquire just who you are? Of course, I forgot you're a stranger. I'm Josh Hudkins. I'm mayor of Broken Lance. Uh, and this is Steve Barrett, our leading citizen. Glad to see you've almost recovered, Bonneau. Well, thanks. But I still don't know what this is all about. <laughs> Why don't you ask Steve? Do you mean that you had me brought here to this hospital? Not only had you brought here, but sent for the best doctor in Kansas and had nurses in attendance day and night. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. I guess I'm under pretty deep obligations to you. Not at all. It was my bank that James boys were headed for. I think Mr. Barnewell has had enough excitement for one day. Of course. Now come and see me as soon as you're up, Marshal. Be in to see you again, Barnewell. Goodbye, Mr. Barnewell. Gang, instead of the James boys that tried to hold up the bank. You might have been able to get even with them. Even with them? Why? After the way they murdered your brother. Like well, who told you about that? Oh, we know a lot about you. Captain in the Civil War, Major Pyle in the Pikes Peak Gold Rush, then lost it all when the Hatton Gang cleaned you out, about your outfitting to go to Oregon, when the James boys. That sort of brings things up to date, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Howdy, Barrett. This the new marshal? Shake hands with that Gilbert, editor of our local paper. How are you? Your election was a splendid thing for us in Broken Lands, Mr. Bonnywell. It was? Yes, I, I'd like to get your views on conditions around here. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be able to give you a very definite statement after I see the mayor. Oh, fine, sir. Thank you, sir. Hey, oh, hello, Steve. Well, come in, Marshal. Come in. I'm glad to see you. Sit right down. I'll get appointed once. 
Why was I elected marshal in this town? Well, after the stands you put up against the James boys... There's no reason for electing me without my consent. Well, surely you must know the people in their quest for a responsible and practical law enforcement officer. Well, I know exactly. They usually pick someone already chosen by the politicians. I'm afraid you have no conception of your popularity. If it'll make you feel any better, I had something to do with your election. You? As a banker, people naturally ask my opinion, and I recommended you. Does that help clear it up? I'm afraid not. Well, then, let me make it plainer. I'm a businessman interested in profit. But there can't be any unless the town is run efficiently, especially in the administration of the law. And Broken Lance is the fastest growing little town in Kansas. Mr. Verd, I appreciate your confidence in me and your many kindnesses. But I was on my way to Oregon when the altercation with the James gang started, and I'm still going. You better think it over. That's a great opportunity here. Well, that's what I hear about Oregon. Goodbye, Mr. Barrett. Come here. Well, funny. I didn't figure it would turn out that way. Marshal. I'd like to have a look at her. You? You're the... Uh... <laughs> I'm the landlady. Oh, how nice. I hope you got a vacant room. Will it be just till you get located, or will this be your permanent headquarters? Well, I don't know. You see, uh... If you decide to live here, we'll do all we can to make you comfortable. Well, I'm sure of that, but, uh, you see... And I don't mind telling you that we're glad to have someone in authority around here. We need you pretty badly, Mr. Barnabas. You really think I could help? After the sample you gave us, I'm sure of it. Let's have a look at a room. One that I can have permanently. I'll show it to you myself. You know, this is the only room with running water. Really? Well, where's your luggage? Oh, it's still at the hospital. Well, as soon as Bones comes back. Bones is our man. I'll have him take care of it. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Elnor. Special attention for the new marshal, huh? I see. I'm Jeff Barrett. Oh, how are you? I think I met your brother. Steve? Nice fellow on a hot day if you need a little cooling off. Oh, don't pay any attention to anything he says. Just between us, that advice comes straight from the heart. Well, I'll remember that. Goodbye, Jeff. By the way, uh, when you see your brother, will you tell him that I've reconsidered that proposition we were discussing? Proposition? He'll understand. <laughs> mistake we made was in pulling that last job. Now it's getting too hot around here for comfort. I never heard of you refusing the cat. Hey, you. <laughs> What's it worth if I tell you about a hot spot for you and me? How much you want to? I'll pay off after I decide you're not talking to your hat. Oh, that's all right with me. Remember John Bonniewell? I believe I do. Jesse James got him over in Broken Lands, Kansas. That's what a lot of people think. But I was talking to a fellow who just drifted in from there yesterday. What about it? Well, that nice, fat little town, there's Bonniewell back to life and elected a marshal. Bonniewell marshal? Good. We put the Indian sign on him once. We can swing any town by the heels where he's marshal. Where is this place? I'll get a map. Good morning, Miss Sager. Good morning. Yes, ma'am, Miss Ellie. It's 8 o'clock, Bones. Go up and wake Mr. Barnwell. Yes, ma'am. Did you say Mr. Barnwell? Yes, Bones. You mean the Mr. Barnwell that's headed out with the James boys? There's no other Mr. Barnwell in this hotel that I know of. The one that shoots and never misses. Yes, wanted to be called at 8 o'clock. Maybe you do, Miss Ellie. But he didn't say for me to call it. Why, Bones? You're not afraid of John Barneywell, are you? Oh, no, I ain't afraid. Just careful. Hello, Bone. Good morning. Why, Jeff Barrett, I didn't know you ever before noon. And look what it does to me. Pouch it under my eyes, no ambition. Say, are you always so pretty this early in the morning? You didn't get up at this hour to say nice things to me, Jeff. 
Where are you heading? Oh, that way. Bonnewell up yet? No, and I must call him. Look, wouldn't it be nice if I stayed here and you awakened me early every morning? This is a respectable hotel. Cattlemen, railroaders, peace marshals. No gamblers. No fun. Never mind. After we're married... When? When I get you to say yes. I haven't really said no, Jeff. Does that mean... No. For just one second, I thought that fate had awakened me at this unearthly hour for a reason. I have a hotel to run. You have a lot more fun running me. And a lot harder work. I'm looking for a man who'll stay home tonight. If you find one, I'll fill him so full of holes. Good morning. Mm. Oh, Mr. Barneywell, your call. Oh, that's quite all right. I was afraid that easy life in the hospital would soften me up. Hi, right, Barry. No one could be very well at this time in the morning. Some coffee might help. The dining room's still open, gentlemen. That's for me. Come along, Barnewell. You join us, Eleanor? I can't. I'm on duty. Come here, boy. What's the matter? Can't you hear? No, sir. It's stone deep. What does that sound like? There ain't no church bell. <laughs> You're right. Get me a paper, will you? Yes, sir. What's the matter with him? Looks like your reputation's gotten around, Mr. Bonnewell. <laughs> You seem like a western girl. Well, as a matter of fact, she isn't. She and her father came here from the east and purchased this hotel. He died shortly after, and Eleanor decided to carry on. It seems rather strange, a girl like her running a hotel. No, oh, it's perfectly safe. Everyone knows about us. I mean... Oh, I see. Congratulations in order? Don't get me wrong. She hasn't said that... Uh, you know how girls are. It takes them a long while to make up their minds. I wish you luck, Barrett. Thanks. I'd say she's worth fighting for. She is. Here's your paper, sir. Oh, thanks. If I were you, I wouldn't take anything you read in that paper too seriously. Oh, it's like that, is it? Like that. How strong do you feel this morning? Oh, strong enough. Strong enough to take a ride with me? Might be a good idea to get around and meet some people. <laughs> you will. Well, we don't go by rule. Until the birds were through paying. <laughs> they wouldn't pay, Marshal. Set my sign full of holes and was going to ride across anyhow. Well, everyone makes mistakes, Pop. We heard Steve Barrett had a new gun hand. How much is your cut? They'll pay you now, Pop. Thank you, Marshal. It'd have been took out of my salary if they'd got away with it. Who owns this bridge? Why, Steve Barrett, of course. Everyone paid across it? That's the rule. Well, I guess we better step along. Understand that all these cattle are being driven to the railroad now. The thousands moving north. See, save a week driving to Broken Lance instead of Abilene, a guard. Broken Lance must be a pretty valuable town. It is. Kansas Pacific Railroad put it on the map. See, we're a hundred miles closer to Texas than any other town. Probably be a lot of Texas men in town tonight. There will be. I'd like you to meet a few of them in advance. I'd like to. What's the idea of these gates? You can't block me from the railroad. I've driven over a thousand miles. What about it? Can't you read? There ain't no sign gonna stop me. Come on, boys. Okay, wait a minute. Jumping 
jihad of that. John Bonnewell. Oh, Tom Wagner, you old son of a coyote. So that's where you've been in Texas. How's everything in Colorado, you old polecat? <laughs> See, you know, you still owe me a drink. And if you'd have gone to Texas with me, you'd have been rich by now. <laughs> hey, a Marshall star, huh? I got talked into something. <laughs> well, they couldn't have made a better choice. Say, where's your calaboose? We'll help you lock up these sunfish and buzzards here. Why, what'd they do? Trying to keep me from coming through here with my cattle. Did you ever hear of anything so high-handed? You the new marshal? That's right. These men assaulted us. Assaulted nothing. We were spoiling the daylights out of them. Who started all the rumpus? They wouldn't pay the tax to cross this private land. What kind of a tax? Dollar a head. That's the rate they all pay unless they want to drive on west of Abilene. Why, well, that's highway robbery. It had cost me $5,000. Who owns this land? Steve Barrett. He knows we've got a right to go cross country. John, move this guard out of here. Well, I'd like to, but unfortunately, Barrett has the law on his side. You're the law? Oh, no, no, I'm just here to enforce it. You ain't lining up against me, are you? You know better than that. But you ain't letting me through. Look, Tom, why don't you camp here for tonight until I have a talk with the owner of this land? That's fair enough, isn't it? If you say so, John. But I don't like it. Ted, we'll hold him here tonight. Get off of that hat, will you? Anything else you want to see? I've seen enough for one day. Ms. Wilson, for your new account. Good day. Good day. Hello, Bonnie. Two things I'd like to ask you, Mr. Barrett. Why, of course. Come in. Have a chair. Thank you. Did Jeff find you this morning? Just got back. Have a cigar? No. Well, what do you think of our setup? But what I think is unimportant. But I'm curious about one thing. Why did you have me elected marshal? I think the answer is obvious. We need a strong hand to handle a certain element in this town that refuses to obey the law. In other words, you expect me to help you and your brother make a cleanup? <laughs> not at all. My brother is not a partner in this enterprise. I own broken lands. Every unsold lot, most of the business, and all the land that surrounds the town. And I own it legally. With deeds, it'll stand up in any court. Now, you're sitting back to make a killing. Huh? Nobody needs settle here. But if they do, it's your duty to see to it that they obey the law. I'm sorry, Barrett, but I didn't deal myself into this game. We're elected in the manner prescribed by the statutes. And if you fail to fulfill your duty, I'm afraid I shall be the first to file a complaint in the courts. <laughs> see, that's the sort of thing I've been referring to. Away. Well, I guess it's your move, Marshal. Come on out, and we'll come in and get you. And bring out some change, mostly two bit pieces. <laughs> well, you're coming out, you rabbit. <laughs> get out and disarm them. Drive them away. It looks to me as though they want to see you. I'm no gunfighter. What do you think you were hired for? I'm beginning to find out. Hi, <laughs> right, you're not the one. You're right, I'm not the man you want, but you'll do. Put your gun away. Take them right to the calaboose, Bonneville. I'll handle this my way unless you want to take my hand. No, 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 not at all. Come on, Marshal, move them away. I'll move them. I guess Tom Wagner had you all wrong, Bonneville. Get this man to the hospital. Yeah, who's going to pay for it? I am. Maybe they will be before this is over. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Well, Aki told me what you done for Kelso, and I want you to know I appreciate it, John. He's a mighty good rider. Oh, his problem was simple enough. It's what to do with the rest of the town is worrying me. The way you tell that this man Ferret believes in throwing his rope over everything in sight. Including me. Well, at that rate, he'll own all of Kansas in a year. And legally. He's too smart to do it any other way. <laughs> Reminds me of a jug-headed, low-coat horse we was breaking last year. Seems like he knowed all the tricks. He'd just roll his eyes and back up and sit down the minute you walked toward him with a saddle. What'd you do, shoot him? No, we cured him. How? Oh. We built a good fire, let him back up and sit down. Of course, he'd done a lot of extra eye rolling, but one treatment made a gentleman out of him. <laughs> Maybe that's what we ought to do with Barrett. Build a fire and let him sit down in it. I'd like to light that fire. I got a hunch you're going to. Tonight. See if you had any trouble. Everything is quiet. Those Texas boys. Were... Sounds like cattlemen. They're moving fast. That's a stampede. Well, I don't want to tell you boys what to do. You got your orders, but I'm getting out of here. We got to keep those cattle from getting past that. Right? I wish you luck. Maybe this will hold. And maybe it won't. Card game, but you have a duty to perform. You're right. I have to draw three cards. I'll take one. Pass. Two. I'll take one. Two. I want you to arrest Tom Wagoner. Oh, is Tom in town? Maybe we better defer this, Marshal. Not unless you're going to call. I'll bet $100. You heard what I said. Get out there. Well, you must have a strong hand, Bonnewell. I have. In that case, I'll just raise you 100 If this is your idea of a joke, Bonnewell, 
I never joke when I'm playing cards. I'll just raise you another hundred. But Wagoner had his cattle driven across my land without the payment of a fee. That's not the way I heard it. What happened? Stampede. Oh. I'll call you. Three aces. Too strong for me, Marshal. And now, Mr. Barrett, what are the charges against Tom Wagner? He had no right to take his cattle across my land without paying. You know, for a smart man, you surprise me. Did you ever try telling a stampeding steer that he didn't have the right to go anyplace? <laughs> All right, I'll settle this matter in court. I'll sue Tom Wagner. Might be a sensible idea. I think that an honest jury in this town might like to sit in judgment of this case. <laughs> oh, I must have fallen asleep. Sorry, it's so late. I thought I'd have to get in through the window. Well, I always wait up for the last guest comes in, and you're not the last. May I wait up with you? Oh, please do. Tell me. How long have you been in Broken Lance? About a year. Ever have any trouble? Trouble? What do you mean? Well, you seem to know the Barretts pretty well. A lot of people have had trouble with them. Yes, I know. Steve Barrett's money mad. He came here from New York. Apparently, people are easier to handle in Broken Lance. I wonder what he did in New York. He was a banker, I think, or a broker. And his brother? Oh, Jeff's different. He's as unreliable as the weather. And as unpredictable. <laughs> yes, I suppose so. Nothing seems to worry him. I like Jeff. I don't blame you. I like Jeff himself. I wonder what he does for a living. Steve probably makes enough for them both. But here I am, going on talking. I'll get your key. You need some rest. <laughs> What's the matter? Miss Eddie, Miss Eddie, I've seen him. I've seen him. Who? The head of the gang. They just rolled into town. How did you know it was the Hatton? I heard some people talking to him when he was walking into the Golden Fairy Saloon. It was the Hatton. Yes, they're all friends of mine. You say they went in the Golden Fairy Bones? Yes, they're just as broad as daylight and bold as brass. Uh -huh. Bones? What's that sound like? There ain't no woodpecker picking. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Thank you. Maybe I better look them up. Old friends deserve a welcome, don't you think? You must be careful. Must I? They probably heard you were marshaled here and came to make trouble. Probably. Right. It won't accomplish anything for you to get hurt. Who said I was going to get hurt? At least, at least promise me you'll wait until morning. Well, I was kind of hoping that maybe we could have breakfast together tomorrow morning. All right, John, but but please, won't I better get them off my mind. Good night. Riding up right now, Tom. Hey, there wasn't any trouble about that stampede, was there? No trouble. You're going to get sued, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll never forget what you've done for us, John. Anytime me and the boys can pull one out of the fire for you, or... Well, maybe you can tonight. What's going on? You remember the Hattons? They're in there. Well, you can count on us, Marshal. Sure can. Well, I hope I don't need you, but if they're looking for trouble... They'll find it. <laughs> hey, boys. <laughs> town you got here, boys. Now, what'd you say your name was? I didn't say, but it's Hatton. Gil Hatton. Figure on staying a while? It all depends, the fellow says. There's Bunnywell at the bar. Art. Let me out a while. Shooting the ass isn't my chance to get him the way I've always wanted to. Stay 
is true. He's wearing a badge. You didn't lose any time, did you, Hatton? Wouldn't have kept the boys and me away, Barnwell. We figured any town where you was marshal would be duck soup for us. What's more, we like it here. Well, that's too bad. Because I'll give you ten minutes to start back to Colorado. Oh, are you aiming to run us out of town? I'm aiming to lock you up as undesirable characters. We're still here in ten minutes. No iron there, brother. Just hands and feet. Not necessarily. 
Only sometimes I like to give a sucker an even break. It makes it more fun to trim him. In other words, you don't like to work behind a man's back, is that it? Yeah. Something like that. Good night. Good night. Thanks again. You Tom Wagoner? That's my name. Well, anyway, wants to see you at the hotel right away. Is the matter more trouble? Wouldn't know. Just have for you to come at once. I'll be right with you. I'll go now and see how Kelso's doing. Good. George, break camp. We'll be heading to Texas just so as I get back to town. Hope John ain't got into another mess of trouble. Slow us up getting away. Hope not. getting hired help. Right. You run this place like a big city hotel. Someday I expect to see Broken Lance grown up. And we all will have had a part in raising it. Good morning. Hello, Jeff. I hope I'm not intruding. Sit down. Thanks. Cup of coffee? No, thanks. Wasn't it wonderful about locking up the Hatton gang? It's not the Hatton because they're worrying me. You're not thinking of my brother, are you? To tell you the truth, I think this town would be a lot better off without him. Why, Steve's practically the father of Broken Man. That's right. He invested his money, helped lay out the town. Someone has to do that sort of thing. Why did you say that? That's Jeff. Well, he means that my brother is a businessman, interested in profits. I mean that your brother is squeezing this town dry. He owns everything in it except the people. He had a lot to do with electing you marshal. Ask Jeff the reason for that one, too. Well, he figured that John would be able to handle the, well, the... Troublesome. He figured I'd keep them in line so that the people wouldn't take the law into their own hands. Steve's never broken a law. Dave, but... Are you looking for me, Malachi? Wagner's been shot. Wagner? Well, what happened? They set a trap and we rode into it. I got away. Who set a trap? Hatton and Nash. But they couldn't. They're in jail. Wagner's dead and they killed him. I saw it. What are you going to do? Plenty. Well, well, that'll be too late. Hatton Nash and his whole gang were released early this morning on bail. Bail? Who put it up for them? Judge Lorham, I wouldn't say, but I thought you might be able to find out. Well, I will. My outfit's still waiting in camp. Well, that's fine in case we need him. <laughs> Come in. Come in. Ah, oh, good morning, Marshal. Why did you let the Hattons go? Well, wasn't aware that such a decision was relevant to Never mind the legal talk. Why did you let them out? Fine, I will. I'm not in the habit of being questioned in this manner. But for your information, proper bonds were put up. Yes? Who signed them? Why, uh... I did, as you must know. And I attested them legally. You know, I suppose if they come up for trial at exactly 10 o'clock? I don't need anyone to remind me of my court calendar. Perhaps not. By the way, how much were those bonds for? Why, in quite a sufficient amount. I think, uh, yes, $20,000. And for once, this town is going to make money on Stephen Barrett instead of the other way around. It's exactly five minutes to 10. And at 10 o'clock, those bonds are forfeited. Don't worry, the Hattons will be here. Tom Wagner has been killed. They're not going to put in an appearance and face a murder trial. In that case, Steve, you'll have to drop the 20000 And if the money isn't paid, I'd be quite within the letter of the law in asking for a writ of attachment on his holdings in the bank. Wouldn't I, Judge Lorimer? Why, surely you wouldn't go to that length, Marshal. Wouldn't I? There must be some way out of this. Not while Bonneville is, Marshal. It might have been better for all of us if he had gone to Oregon.
brings you here? Not a very hospitable greeting, it seems to me. I'll be with you in a minute. I don't mind waiting. The bank is prospering, I trust. It only means you're broke when you begin to worry about the bank's condition. It's really funny how astute you bank us all. How much? Five thousand dollars. Oh, you're crazy. I run a bank, not a printing press. What do you think I get my hands on so much money? Why, Stevie, I thought there was much more than that in the vault. The money in this bank belongs to the depositors. Oh. <laughs> what kind of a jam you get yourself in this time? Another gambling debt. What else? I lose a playing card and you lose a going bail for a couple of Never months. Never mind about that. I'm afraid you'll have to help yourself this time. How badly do you need that money? Badly enough to get it before I leave. You wouldn't want Bonnewell to know some things that happened before you came here, would you? So that's the line. You and Bonnewell. Oh, now you're rather overdoing that astuteness I spoke of, my dear brother. Bonnewell means nothing to me. As a matter of fact, I've got considerable reason to wish that he was on the other side of the world. But I need that money. And you wouldn't mind if Bonnewell were disgraced and thrown out of office. I'd laugh about it just as heartily as you, but for an entirely different reason. Too bad Hatton didn't get him instead of Wagner. However, there may still be time. Now, wait a minute. If that happened, I'd be the first one to warn him. You haven't quite got me straight yet, Stevie. I'm not a murderer. Someday, your precious sense of honor is going to send you to your grave. How'd you like $10,000? Ten thousand? Close one. Listen, I'm all ears, Steve. I'm sending twenty-five thousand dollars in cash out of here on a train that leaves for Kansas City at midnight. Well, holding up trains isn't exactly in my line. Clerk and an armed guard will take the money from the bank to the train. That's fine, Steve. Fine. All except the armed guard. I can see to it that the gun is empty. Then it should be very difficult for you to take the money away from them as they approach the station. Now wait a minute. Let me get this straight. I take all the risk and get less than half the money. Is that it? Well, what's wrong with that arrangement? It isn't even worth discussing. I'll tell you what I'll do, though. I'll take the risk and the 25,000. Your plan to discredit Bonnewell succeeds, and you have the ammunition to start a recall proceeding. Is the deal? Go ahead. You've set it up. Howdy. I was uh, hoping you would back alone. It looks like they skipped the country clean. We'll get them. I wanted to see you, Mr. Bonnywell, because you ought to know what's going on. Shoot. They talk around town that you're not able to run down the hat. Well, I can imagine who started it. But I also wanted you to know there are quite a few of us here who do understand just what's going on. Well, thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Now, I've seen Stephen Burt destroy quite a few men he couldn't control. Then why do you stand from here? Because we've never had a man strong enough to fight for us. As long as I've been pushed out on a limb, maybe I better try and keep Barrett from sawing it off. I sure hope you can. Oh, so long, Marshal. Oh. And here's today's paper. Um. Yes, 
your working hours. I left myself off early tonight. You wouldn't have a room to rent, would you, lady? Oh, as a matter of fact, I have not full up. If you'd only let me know this morning. Well, I didn't figure on moving this morning. Could I check your bags, sir? No, thanks. This morning, I... Uh, one second. Perhaps you had better put it away for me, Bones. Yes. You'll be quite safe. Busy lady, aren't you? The hotel won't run by itself. You saw him, did you? Yep. And he was carrying a satchel, all right. And he went right into the Sager house. Thank you. You stay here, Malaki. If I'm not back in ten minutes, sure. Been in the saddle all day. I'm sorry about your friend, John. Yes, it's too bad we didn't finish those fellows last night. Yes, it is too bad. No trace of them at all? No trace. Well, tomorrow's another day. And if I can help... Thanks. You're not in your usual game tonight, I see. No, Jeff's reform. Given up his late hours moving into the hotel. Here, you check for your satchel, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Must have been a kind of a heavy bag to carry, wasn't it, Bones? Oh, no, sir. It was a very small satchel, sir. I told Jeff he should have let me know earlier, and I would have had a room for him. Well, he probably didn't know himself. It was quite late. Did you just get in, Jeff? Oh, about half an hour ago. Why, Jeff, you just came in a few minutes before John. Yeah, maybe she's right. Talking to you, I didn't notice. Well, then I guess you didn't hear about the holdup of the bank messenger. The bank messenger? It happened about 20 minutes ago. The holdup man got away with a small satchel containing about $25,000 of the bank's funds. My brother's bank? Hmm. He'll probably expect you to do something about that, Marshal. Do you know who did it, John? I think I do. Tell me, did anyone identify the hold-up man? I know who he is. John, are you sure? Sure that you know? Yes, I'm sure. The question then becomes, what are you going to do about it? There isn't any choice. John, you have to be very, very sure about a thing. I am sure. Well, how can we ever be sure of anything? Why, when... Well, when Jeff came in, for instance, I, uh, I noticed that he was carrying a small satchel. Yes? Well, it was such a small satchel, and... Uh, well, I, I said uh, that it was hardly big enough for a toothbrush, and then when he opened it and showed it to me, well, it was full of clothes, too. You saw inside the satchel? Well, of course, John. So, you see, we, we never can be sure of anything, can we? Looks like you're wasting time, John. Perhaps I am. That was wonderful, darling. Go no away. But you... Go away, go away. Tell me where I had to have that money. It was a debt of honor. And you saved me. Why can't we leave here? Go away somewhere else and start over again. I'll do anything. I'll give up everything just to try and make you happy. Well, you must care a little or else you wouldn't have... Oh, you fool. Do you think it was you I wanted to say? It was pretty stupid of me not to understand. I'll take that satchel now, Bones. Oh, yes, sir. Right here. Thank you. Malachi and I got off in the wrong steer, boys. The hold-up man hasn't had a chance to get very far. We've got to spread out. And... Here's something that may interest you, Bonnewell. Where'd you get this? I stumbled across it. Maybe the hold-up man found it was too hot and had to drop it. Where did you find it, Barrett? Near the hotel. That's fine. I'll have to write an article for the paper about this. Congratulations, Bert. Well, me and the boys better get back to camp. We'll be around a few more days if you need us.
don't seem particularly pleased to get the money back. I'm not quite sure what to think yet. Well, I'll tell you, John, when I'm in a spot like that, I don't try to think. I just play my hand. Maybe you're luckier than I am. Yeah. Then again, maybe I'm not. I heard how you accidentally found the money. Why did you give it to Bonnie Will? I thought it would be a pleasant change to have an honest man in the family. You're a fool, Jeff. I seem to remember that you brought Bonnie Will here. And I'm going to get rid of him, too. I had word from Gil Hatton tonight. <laughs> he didn't offer to refund your bail money, did he? He offered to turn it into an investment. Liquidating Bonnewell? Any deal I make will pay adequate returns. I'll give you a piece of advice, my dear brother. Keep your insurance up. By the way, it's still made out in my favor, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Good night. Uh, good night, Steve. Yes, ma'am. Did you put the bacon in? Oh, yes. Good morning. Good morning. Going somewhere? Aunt Cheryl lives five miles out in the country. She hasn't been well, and I'm taking her some provisions. Won't you come along? I'd love to, but there's some things I should do. Don't you think you've worked hard enough to entitle you to a day's rest? Maybe I better accept before you change your mind. Good. Oh, Yes. What's that sound like? There ain't no clock of ticking. Put you on the cuff for a month. Good. Say hello to your aunt Sarah for me. I will. What is it this time? I've been keeping track of Bonnie like you told me. Yes. He just drove out of town, headed for the toll bridge road. Was he alone? No, Miss Sager was with him. You saw them leave together? Not ten minutes ago. She talked about going to see her aunt, and the marshal left with her. How long would it take you to reach Hatton? About an hour. About an hour. I'm so glad you asked me to come along. Peaceful after all the excitement in town. So nice just being here with you. John, there's something I must tell you about Satchel. When I said I saw inside of him. Lying to me? Jeff had a gun trained on you behind the counter. He did? He would have killed you if I hadn't stopped him. Ellen, I knew you were lying to me about the satchel. But I didn't know that you were trying to save me, not him. Jeff! I wouldn't want to say anything, but I've known people to get themselves talked about for much less than this. I'm sorry you rode out here. You won't be when I tell you what brought me. You held up that bank message. I'm not worried about the past, John. It's the present that worries me. Gil happens after you, and he knows where you are. Why are you warning me? Because I don't like the idea of Eleanor getting caught in the middle of a gunfight. 
Come on, we'll start back one. You wouldn't mind if I went with you, would you? Wouldn't it be better for all concerned if you kept on going in the opposite direction? Well, what do you know about that? The man's jealous. Jeff, he's giving you a chance. He steals my girl, takes her off picnicking, and then expects me to miss the ride back to town. Personally, I think he's crazy. We're wasting time. Now you're talking sense. just across the toll bridge. You and Elna better get started on foot. What about you? I'll go in the opposite direction and lead them away from the bridge. They'll catch you. Listen, lady. If you interfere with my fun, I'll sure spread tales about you and Bonneville down there at the river. Come on, Bonneville. Get in, Bones. But you don't know what Come they're... on, Bones, get in. Yeah. What do you think, John? Where Jeff Barrett is concerned, I've stopped thinking. Got them all the way safely, did you? Yeah. They'll probably refer to me in history books as the great liberator. What are we waiting for? You forgot to liberate yourself, mister? Oh, I didn't think that was necessary. See, I'm Jeff Barrett, Steve's brother. That's a good one. How do we know he's Steve Barrett's brother? Take a look at that. It's a Jeff from Steve. Well, look what we got here. Come on, get out. Oh, Mr. Bass. Please, Mr. Bass. Don't let him shoot me. Did that convince you? Who's that boy? An old family retainer. I'll have to break you of the habit of riding in back of surreys, though. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Well, we'll find out when we get in town. Get back in there. <laughs> Go. Come on. Jeff. Oh, now don't you worry about him. He can take care of himself. Mr. Bonnewell, this just came to you. Thank you. And it is therefore the findings of this court that the defendants, William Daniels, Ed Tracy, Walter McIntyre, and Lloyd Frame, 
have violated the terms of their contracts under which they purchased land from the plaintiff, Stephen Barrett, and said contracts are declared null and void, and the land will therefore revert to the plaintiff. Steve sold the town, and now he's taking it back? <laughs> Order! Order! How did we know we were supposed to carry insurance? And Sheriff never told us about it. Order! Order! Any further disturbance, and I will order the courtroom cleared. Ignorance of the contents of the contract you signed is no excuse in the eyes of the law. <laughs> Judgment is hereby entered against the defendants, and in favor of the plaintiff, Stephen Barrett. Where's the marshal? Marshal! You will serve these notices on the defendants at once and take possession of the land in the name of... You're just a little hasty, Judge Lorimer. Now, Marshal, if you want to... I'll get to you later, Mayor Hutkins. As Marshal of this town, I stand ready to perform all my duties. But the law specifically says that a judgment cannot be rendered in favor of anyone under indictment. You will have to prove that. I intend to. I have here an answer to a telegram that I sent to the police in New York City. It says to hold one Stephen Barron, alias Steve Barrett, who was indicted for grand larceny in New York State and fled before he can be arrested. Well, Marshal, it looks like you're one up on me. I guess mine is the next move. I guess so. to ride at once and take over the town. He's out of his mind. We ain't got enough men. We hired a crew of gun hands in Haleyville yesterday. They'll be waiting for you at the lower ford. All right. Saddle up, boys. You're riding with us, Barrett. Marshal will probably make a stand at the jail where he's got Steve Barrett. All right. We'll take the north road to town and nail him there. That's the trouble with you fellas. You don't plan things out. Just how would you go about doing it? Well, in the first place, I'd use the element of surprise. I'd hit hard and quick. Before anyone in town knew what had happened. Go on. Well, the toll bridge is the direct way into town, not the north road. What are you getting at? I'm trying to tell you how to get into town fast, with less chance of being seen. Maybe he's right. The north road's in plain sight for a mile. I was thinking about that. Let's get started. Once you're in town, you head straight for that jail and leave Barneywell to me. Bones. Bones. Yes. Start running and don't stop until you get into town. Suppose I'll get caught. If you do, they'll shoot you. That's what I thought. It's your business not to get caught. Go straight to the marshal. Tell them they're coming into town by the toll bridge and to stop them with dynamite. Yes. Did you say dynamite? Yes. Now get to the brush. Remember dynamite. Dynamite. <laughs> Ever try to catch a scared rabbit? He gets in town. After what he heard, he'll probably head in just the opposite direction if I know that boy. You're likely right. Have a cigarette, Hat. No, thanks. Come on along. <laughs>
But I've got to move Tom's outfit back to Texas. Well, there are enough men in Martin. town. <laughs> Just got out our first extra, all about the arrest of Steve Barrett. We owe you a lot in this town. Mr. Bonnewell! Mr. Bonnewell! Mr. Smart! Mr. Smart! Take it easy, Bones. Take it easy. I'll run all the way. Mr. Jeff said. Well, where is he? What did he say? He said, put dynamite under the bridge. Put dynamite under the bridge, Bones? Why? Yes, the hat. They own the way. Looks like we better not leave for tomorrow. Take him back to the hotel. You get your men together, Malachi. Yes, sir. John! John! What is it? What's happened to Bones? I guess we're in for a little trouble. I just got word from Jeff. The Hattons? I'm going to the bridge and try to stop them. Why don't you take a notion to go and visit Aunt Sarah? Oh, John, you you will be careful. I'm taking Malachi and some men with me. Thanks to Jeff, we'll have a little surprise for them. Is there something I can do? Yes, you go to the hotel and stay there. Marshal, know as soon as you see him. I sure will. to use it. Hey, listen, boys. Let's see if we can't scare them off without any killings. Hey, Charlie, be sure and wait for my signal. Yes. trying to get across that bridge on horseback. Why don't you have your boys make it on foot? Not a bad idea. You and Barrett take part in the men. We'll cover you. Ten of your men, come over here. Come on. The rest of you get behind these rocks on both sides. Come on, boys. Ready? Yeah, ready. Oh, no. You go first. Again, on foot. 
it this time.
Hello, John. You'll be up and around in a day or two. I'm not so happy about that. I'm going to miss our daily visits. I don't think you will. It's funny, but you know, the only time we seem to have together is when I'm in a hospital. What's that noise? Well, town people are here to celebrate. You know, they can find more things to celebrate in this town. What is it now? Your engagement. Engagement? To whom? Why, to Miss Sager, of course. She announced it this morning. John, I didn't think you'd mind. Mind? 